The City Football Group could mark the end of football as we know it and start a total revolution. And we aren't just saying it to keep you glued to the screen. It's literally what it is. We could be witnessing one of the biggest turning points in the history of football in real time and nobody's noticing. So first of all, what the hell is the City Football Group? And is it actually that much of a problem? You see, in order to understand why they could start a total revolution, we must know who they are first. Think about Manchester City. They had an exponential rise starting from the last decade, going from a normal mid-table club to the best club in the whole world. Their rise starts from when Sheikh Mansour, vice president of the UAE, so this should just give you an idea of how much money the guy has, decided to buy the club back in 2008. Sheikh Mansour owns Abu Dhabi United Group, an investment and administration company run by the UAE's royal family. Following the big steps took ever since buying Manchester City in 2008, with the team winning the Premier League in 2012, Mansour decided it was time to put even more money in the world of football. So he created the City Football Group in 2013, another holding company with its full focus on football, with the 81% of it being majority owned by the Abu Dhabi United Group. The City Football Group name obviously comes from their biggest club and asset, Manchester City. So now that we know their backstory, let's understand what their goal is and why is it really that much of a problem. As reported on their website, their goal is to increase participation in football on and off the field, to find and develop the best footballing talent, and to deliver an exciting and forward-playing game. And I mean, you can't say that this isn't what they're doing. The City Football Group has been building a huge network of clubs from all over the world. They recently bought a club in Turkey. They own the clubs in Italy, Spain, Japan, Australia, some with bigger stakes and some with smaller ones. Hell, they even own clubs in Bolivia and India, but also so many more countries. Just to be clearer, here's a map with all the clubs they own right now. As you can see, they develop their network basically everywhere. They take small clubs and bring them to success, just like they did for Manchester City. Proof of that is the wonderful season that Girona has been having. Then, they do also develop young talents from the club's country. So that means we could see more wonder kids from India, Japan, or Bolivia in the near future. Up until this point, it all looks fine, right? I mean, you can't argue that it isn't absolutely good to allow kids to develop their talent even in some countries where they typically have less chances to do so. So why did we talk about a problem that leads to a revolution? Well, City Football Group is surely the biggest, but it's just one of the many groups of clubs that have been created over the last 10 years. This structure with multiple clubs being owned by a single company is called multi-ownership. Back in 2012, only 40 clubs were a part of this multi-ownership thing. Now there's more than 180. City Football Group is obviously the biggest one. Then there's Red Bull, then the Enios Group, which recently bought Manchester United, then Chelsea owning Strasbourg, and so on. To sum it up, multi-ownership is quickly developing, and the issue with that is really simple. The full focus on the entire operation is to get talents to play regularly, and then if they're good enough, they gradually get promoted to a better partner club, until they get to the best one. So for example, that would be Manchester City for the City Football Group. At the moment, the first player to go through this process is Savio Moreira. He was signed by Troyes, a club of the CFG, in the summer of 2022, but he never played there. The only reason he was signed by that specific club was probably to avoid the financial fair play issues. He was first loaned to PSV last season, and then to Girona this season, another partner group, where he has been amazing. Now, Manchester City signed him for the next season, the problem with this kind of process is that the CFG can simply steal all the talents available to have it under their control and test if they're good enough. Then, if they're actually good, they get to play for Man City. Not to talk about the fact that these fees could easily be fixed since the negotiation literally doesn't feature two parties. The fact that they can simply avoid financial fair play by making a partner club sign the player and then loan it to them is also something unbelievable. Did you hear about the backstory of Ernest Noema's transfer to Lyon? 
The French club was clearly struggling financially and just couldn't spend much money for FFP reasons. So why did they end up going? Their Belgian partner club, RWDM, signed Noma for over 30 millions, and then they loaned him out to Lyon. You see how crazy this whole thing is, right? And going back to City Football Group, believe me, we are facing a really big issue because competition with them will soon be none, and this just increases Manchester City's hedge money as the best club in the world. Just think about the huge gap that is going to be created in the upcoming years. How the hell can other clubs compete in this way? It's just unfair. And there's a reason Chelsea and Manchester United have been trying to get into this business model too. Chelsea just bought Strasbourg to offload the dozens of wonder kids that they have. While Enios, the new owners of Manchester United, also own Nice and Lucerne. The other issue is also related to the small clubs that get bought by these groups, just to be the ones to develop and then sell talents without having the main objective of succeeding. So it just kills the whole meaning of the club. There's a reason NAC Breda fans didn't want the CFG to sign them, and they made the takeover stop. People complain because the Super League takes competition away, but nobody complains because of this. It's so weird to us. Let us know in the comments what you think.